G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, um, 20 to 30, um, it's quite humid but there's a possible a possibility of showers and a thunderstorm. Um, outside at the moment it's the, like the sun's up nice and bright and all but it's um, it is cloudy, um, you can see the cloud through. It's not a dull cloudy day, it's a bright cloudy day which sort of gives us the impression that the cloud's not that thick. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of humidity. Um, through the week we got a storm and we got 11 millimetres and that added to the 25 the week before, so a bit under half an inch this week, um, which is good. Um, I've, I've been around with the mower and the tank on the back doing a bit of um, roundup spraying, um, just around the fence lines and that, and we're coming up to the time of year where we spend quite a bit of time on the mower and um, yeah, and, and just spraying around the sheds to stop all the woody weeds growing and all that. So um, I've still got a bit of a mess out the front of the shed from the shed tidy up and um, the shed tidy up still ongoing. Um, I've got most of it good, but there's always stuff. And so I'm, I'm trying to put in, every time I have a time to come to the shed here, I try and do something. And it doesn't matter whether it's just tidy up a couple of boxes. Um, I've changed the stuff up near the CNC router and I've swept the floor the other day and I'm yet to pick it up with the shovel, that's this morning's job, try and tidy up up there a little bit. Um, if it's not a rainy day, I'm gonna put the John Deere and the 135 out the front and that'll let me get the forklift in and get the parts out, those three pallets of parts. I can bring them out into the driveway down this way a bit further where I can get a forklift to them and I can continue that. Um, I haven't finished organising all the parts yet. So, um, so look, there's stuff to do, but I seem now to have time, apparently. <laughs> um, the business settled last Thursday evening and um, Dean and Nikita, um, Dean and Nikita helping are the people that bought it. And we put a post on Facebook on Queensland Tractor Spares, on mine, on Bundy Bear's shed. Um, yeah, we, we put the put it all out there and um, yeah a lot of the people, Dean's customers that sort of congratulated him and that, um, they weren't customers of the shop so I think he's going to pick up some business there straight away. Um, but yeah look we, we just wish them the best, eh? it's just um, they, they're keen as mustard, they come in on Thursday for settlement and they had all the bloody like, company shirts all done and the kids had company shirts with the logos on and looked pretty fancy. Um, so yeah, Thursday Arvo, we stood out the front of the shop and got the photo taken with the staff and um, once we knew the computers were okay and Dean's brother Jacko sorted out the POS system, you know, put all the new invoice and statement stuff on and all that. Once we knew that was underway, they were sitting having a drink, you know, finishing things off. So we thought, oh, well, look, we'll leave you to it. And we handed the reins over. Um, we didn't go in Friday. Um, we... The deal was that um, two weeks before settlement, they could come into our business and find out all the nitty gritty and two weeks after we'd stay on. But Dean came in a month before and I gave him an office and I set him up with a brand new computer and um, for two or three weeks, he's had the complete point of sale system on his computer. I took it off mine, put it on his so he could track the sales. He could see how everything worked, um, check stock items, check pricing and all that. So um, we set him up with that three weeks ago. So. He's been rattling away with that, and I've had to ask him, how's the day going? Dean, are we having any sales? Or what's, the, what's the figures looking like? <laughs> so um, we got him in there early, and um, after being in there so long, I, they didn't say it, but I got the feeling that they were ready to take the reins and give us a crack at this. Yeah, they were, they were ready to, to hook in. Um, so on Friday, we said, look, we'll hand you the reins. We won't come in. Just you know, get underway for the day. And we're only at home here, which is seven k's away. If, if the shit hits a fan and you need us, um, give us a yell, you know. But we'll make ourselves available, but um, we don't want to be that old couple that hang around in the business thinking it won't run without them. It will run without us. And look, it'll probably run better. You know, fresh eyes, new blood, all this young energy into the place. Um, I'm sure they'll make a go of it. And um, yeah, they'll probably increase the takings and all that. And um, so yeah, look, we, we wish them the best and uh, we're pretty sure they'll go well with it. Um, Jude and I had to, <laughs> bloody banks, um, it settled 
Thursday, and I told the bank manager, uh, our business banker, that at settling Thursday night, the money is going in the bank about two o'clock Thursday afternoon. Could we come in on Friday and have a look and settle accounts and shut the overdraft and all that? Then I get a call about nine o'clock Friday morning. Oh, it's Mark from the bank. Oh, yeah, what's going on? Oh, he said, I see the business went through. The money's in the account. And I said, yeah, I see that. He says, yeah, well, no, it's not in the account properly yet. It's not cleared. Um, it, it, was a, it was a bank check from the solicitor's trust account. And, um, and I said, but we can see it there. But he said, yeah, it's not available yet. And I said, well, when's it going to be available? And he said, oh, perhaps next Wednesday or something like that. And he said, so there's no use coming in to have a meeting today because there's nothing I can do. And I said, oh, OK. <laughs> and um, he said, yeah, perhaps we'll make a meeting next Wednesday and we'll sort all your money out then. And in the meantime, just keep the mortgages like for the young bloke's house going and, and all that. And he said, oh, if there's any extra interest there, you'll just have to pay it. And so um, it's a lot of money um, and it's sitting there. We can't go and spend it because it's, you know... Oh, well, there's different bank accounts. There's, there's Lance and Jude's bucket and there's a company bucket. And because the company sold the business, that's the company's money. So that's that's good. Um, but, um, yeah, even though it's there, they can see it sitting there and it come from a solicitor's trust account straight in. Um, so they get the money for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So they get five days on... A big hunk of money. And, and look, the hunk of money is big enough that you could pop into town and buy most houses. Um, it's, it's a fair chunk. And um, yeah, <laughs> and that, that gets up my nose a bit. They just, they diddle and doodle. But if it was the other way, like I bet it come out of the other account the instant. As soon as they said go, bang, gone. So yeah, so the bank will be, um, got this big chunk of money sitting there. And um, so then we had an appointment with the accountant and um, we said, you know, whose money is it? How does that work? And it's, um, even though Lance and Jude own the company, it's company money. So it's not ours particularly. Um, but, yeah, we can pay the mortgage and, you know, tidy up financial things. But um, we've got to leave some aside. And I said, oh, how much? What's the tax on that, they reckon? And he says, oh, he says, yeah, it could be 150000 <laughs> oh bugger! But in Australia, there's this thing like if we'll pay 150,000 tax on that bit. Um, that's on top of our other stuff. And um, but because it's company money, it goes into the tax department. Then because we're not running a business anymore, we just um, the company's not trading and we're not earning any money. Over the years, we get a franking credit for that, which means it's a credit in our name. So say. And it won't, that won't sort out for like a couple of years, so we can't touch that part. Not that we've got anything to do with it anyway. We don't need it. But um, So we can put that franking credit there and say, and his, his example was say in a, in a couple of years, Judy and I just decided to take $100,000 out. So we have 50000 get spread each, and then you have your standard tax rate, and your standard tax on that would be $8,000 each. And then... Um, but because we have a franking credit in the company, instead of paying eight thousand dollars tax, we get four thousand back each. So even though you've got to pay that tax now, over the next following years, you can sort of draw it back in. Um, so I'm not. That's that's a bit of a description of it. I'm not sure how. It, I'm not hundred percent sure. That's um, that's the basics as I understand it anyway. And, and don't take that as gospel. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah. The, um, the, the business is sold, I'm unemployed and probably unemployable. <laughs> um, and yeah, Friday we went to the accountant and sorted all that out and had a town day and just sorted stuff out. But um, Judy was a bit like it, but I found after the place sold, um, I'd come up the shed here and I was a bit lost. I had no energy. And um, I don't know because we've been working so hard on it and, you know, it's... A, it's been fairly stressful. No, I don't stress much, but yeah, you know, it's just been a constant thing. And have we done this? Have we done that? Have we done something else? And um, I felt, <coughs> I mean, I felt sort of drained. My energy was gone. And um, I'd come up here and I'd, I'd do a few threads in the welding bench and um, have a fiddle on the lathe. And 
uh, you know, no, no direction sort of thing, yeah. So um, diddled and doodled about and did a bit of cleaning up and, um, yeah, went and did a bit of roundup spraying and all that. But, um, um, yeah, so Saturday I was a bit doughy, <laughs> very doughy. Um, yesterday morning I didn't even open the shed. I just thought, oh, bugger, I just don't feel like doing that. Then we had the club meeting, the Rum City Vintage Machinery Club meeting, yesterday afternoon, so that was good, and um, had a bit of a snooze, and yeah, so I'm, I'm way better today, I've got direction today again, I feel like, right, I'm going to get into that corner and do that, and I'm going to, you know, do that, so I've got direction back, but yeah, for a few days, there, I don't know whether it was the, um, the change of circumstance, the relief, the lifting of the pressure, or the whatever, but I just felt doughy, not crook, nothing like that, just doughy, you know, couldn't get out of my own way. So, yeah, I'm glad that's a bit better <laughs> today. I was thinking, if this is retirement, this is shit. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm back on back on deck today, and um, I'm up the shed, keen to have a bit of a fiddle, fiddle and a muck around. And um, yeah, I, I I tapped a heap of holes on the welding bench the other day with that three quarter UNC tapping. And yesterday I was good, but today, this morning, I was putting my shirt on. Oh, I've got sore shoulders in here, <laughs> bloody unfit prick. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, the only way to fix that is go and do a few more. So I've just been up there doing a couple more this morning. And um, I'll leave a couple for each day over the next week or so, and that'll loosen everything up. Because I know sitting in an office and diggy, 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 dig, looking at a screen, that's no good for you long term. Yeah, so. um, part of the Queensland Tractor Spares business was we're in a, a buying group. It's a cooperative called Capricorn. And um, you get reward points over the years and things like that. So... We had some of them and we had some shares to sell out of there. We sold $10,000 worth of shares out of there the other day. And, um, but they're going to keep that going because Bundy Bear's shed is its own business with its ABN and all that sort of thing. So we've kept that going. But um, we had some brownie points, some reward points to use up. And I had a look at what was available and I had been thinking of getting another camera. Um, and look, what they had available, and this is the way I went anyway, is... I've never been a, a, a real supporter of GoPro. I like DJI stuff, but they didn't have DJI, but we could buy um, through it just with points. Um, no money changes hands, but just with points. I could get the um, GoPro Hero 12, and you can see I've got the media mod on it. And then this bottom piece here, this is the, this is the vloggers pack, and so this... This sits down like a tripod and you can have it sitting like that. But with the handle here, it has an on-off switch and this cord here, um, the reason for the cord, well, you can go on, off and all that, but this is a, a large battery. So they say with this battery hooked up for wandering around, and we're planning on doing a bit of traveling and that, and I find when I'm traveling at tractor shows, the GoPro is actually my preferred um, camera. Um, I'm not 100% sure why, I just seem to like it. So, um, so when we travel and all that, this is going to be my main travel camera. Um, it does 4K and it does an extra high, high definition now. And um, yeah, it's got this media mod with the microphone. I can set the microphone to um, get the sound from the front or from the back. Um, these microphones here I have on the roads. Um, they can sit up the top there and there's a port for them to plug in. So if it's really windy or something like that, I can have one of these on and sort of shield it and hold it in my hand and, and put the signal through. So um, looks like there's another, oh, look at that. There's a little, there's a little camera mount comes out the side of the handle. I didn't know that till just now. Then I'll have to work out how you put it back. Oh, you press the handle, then put it back. Yeah, so there you go. So yeah, we've got another camera. Um, I've, I've been fiddling on the bench with it, you know, just... Um, I've, got a, I've got a Hero 9 as well, and I, I like the Panasonic Lumix that I, I'm filming this on because it's got a flip-out side screen, and it doesn't matter what angle I have the camera on, you know, because when you're filming at the bench, you have funny angles. I can set that up and I can actually see my shot, um, a nice clear shot. Um, what this does is I can set this up to the shot and I can actually have the screen 
Wi-Fi through to my phone. And so I can sit the phone up somewhere where I can keep an eye on it. And when you're working away, like you, you've got your hands on the bench and sometimes you don't know it's in the shot or I've been, I've been in the past, I'm here I am chatting away and you can't even see what I'm bloody doing. <laughs> Not very professional, but that's how we roll. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the new thing for that. Um, I probably will fiddle around with it a bit with the phone and, and set up. I've got an extra wide lens that goes on there. Um, really spans it out. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Look, just normal like this is about, you know, it's a pretty good setup. It's got all the horizontal lock, so, you know, if, you, if you're walking along and you, you turn it like that, well, it'll still, yeah, you, you as a viewer won't know. So, um, so yeah, I've got that happening here. Um, looks like another little knob there for something or other. Well, that must be where we charge it. Yeah, don't mind me, that's where you charge it. <laughs> but anyway, I'll have to learn, learn a few GoPro things. So, oh look at that, a little red light come on when I press the button, so it'll probably come on in a minute and I'll be filming myself, filming myself, filming myself. Anyway, I might charge it, I don't know what it's doing. Don't know, we'll work it out one day, hey. So, they, one thing about GoPros, they have these, um, these containers to cart them in, and oh, this one here, it actually has a, a USB chargeable light. Um, so yeah, if you want to light up what you're taking photos of and you can. Now, it's got me rooted why you would have that. But anyway. Must have to hold it in. Yeah, there we go. So it's got a light that sits on the top or on the side. So we can light up what we're filming. Um, so anyway, we'll see how all that goes. The welding bench, like I was saying, when I'm feeling a bit, <laughs> a bit unenergetic, um, I've been tapping a few holes. And I, those little slugs I had off the end of pins that I'd machined off that I was going to use, I found setting them up in the lathe and drilling them is no worries, but um, holding them and not spinning the thread up um, when you're trying to power tap them, um, yeah, I'd, I'd wreck one or two doing that. So what I've decided to do now is that's just some three-quarter UNC threaded bar I had. I've sitting that up in the lathe. I'm dr drilling a hole through it. I'm parting it off, and then I'm going to sit it over near the into the holes. And I've got a little tap stand. It's a magnetic tap stand that holds the tap true. So I'm going to part off the, one of those nuts I was going to part off, part it off, lock that onto the bench, use the magnet, and that'll tap these threads straight. So that's just another job. That's a fiddle when I'm over there looking out the door, catching the afternoon breeze. Um, it's one of those jobs. I'm just putting along with it. It doesn't got to be done urgently. It doesn't really got to be done at all. But I've just decided to do it. And... Um, yeah, some days you think, oh, I don't feel like doing this. I'll go and do a bit of machining. You know, I love machining, so um, I think I'll... Um, I'm, well, I'm hoping to get back into machining more um, as time goes on, but I've got a lot of tractor stuff ahead of me. Everyone says, oh, what are you going to do? I says, well, I've got one, two, three, four, five tractors apart in different sections. Some of them, like the Ford 2000, I've only got to put the carby together and back on. The, the Massive 20's all done apart from the bonnet, and I've got a but I can't get near the bonnet because I've got shit everywhere. <laughs> um, so we're going to um, work with what we've got apart and just try and get that going. Um, the Massey 65 here, um, I've, I've got all the pipe there and the hoses to make the breather. I want to pull the radiator back out, possibly spray the radiator and inside the shroud, then put that back together and bolt that on and have the breather pipe on and just tidy that end up and then we'll start on the back end with the final drives. Um, I've got all my lifting gear ready and I've, I've got the shed clean enough now that I can actually use the lifting gear and not, um, not bust me bum too much. Um, see how we go once again. Um, yeah, we'll just see, see what works where. So anyway, see. But look, that's it. Um, I've got very little to show you this week. It's going to be a short stew. Um, 
mainly because I spent most of the time last week in the shed, um, in at the Queensland Tractor Spares, and um, and then the Friday was our first day of retirement, and yeah, we had meetings and had stuff we had to do, get downtown and go to accountants and things like that. Then, yeah, Saturday uh, I was up here, but I just wasn't. Yeah, couldn't get couldn't get excited apart from tapping a few holes. Sunday I didn't come, and um, so Monday it's Monday today, um, Monday morning, um, probably half past six, seven o'clock maybe, and um, we've got the stew done. So later on, if it storms or if it rains or something, I'll be up editing this, and um, yeah, trying to get that out. So <laughs> plenty to do, and there's a shitload of office work still. Like um, every morning, there's emails, there's YouTube comments, there's um, emails on a, on a few different accounts and Facebook messaging and all that sort of stuff and um, sorting out our own business stuff like we have to hop into our superannuation and um, sort that roll that over and into an annuity and, and there's just all that junk to do too so <laughs> we'll see but anyway look sorry about the short stew there's not a lot to talk about um, because I haven't been doing anything I'm hoping through the week um, that water pump, that T20 water pump that I pulled apart last week, I'm hoping just to do a standalone video on assembling the water pump. I'm not 100% sure how I should go with it because it's a Sparex pump, um, and I don't want people to think it's a genuine Fergie pump. Um, I'll have to explain that it's a Sparex one, and, and I'll have to talk about it. I didn't film, and I had a look around. I thought, geez, I'm sure I'd have a spare pump here somewhere, but I haven't, and I was going to film pushing one pump apart and then that new pump I was going to film putting it together and talk about that but um, unless I can find up in my stuff up the back there another old water pump um, yeah it might just be a, a put together one but anyway we'll see um, but anyway as Barry says oh Barry um, um, Barry suggested with tapping those holes there I was getting a little uh, a little push thread on the top a little bulge um, countersink. I didn't think I had a countersink big enough, that's why I didn't go on that way, but anyway, after he mentioned it, I thought, oh, I'll just see, and I've got one that just, just fits. It's three-quarter OD. Oh, it must be about 20 mil, and it just fits, and it works a treat, Barry, so thanks for that. I'm doing that now. Um, yeah, and it does make it easier for sure, so um, anyway, stay tuned. I'll show you the welding bench when it's done. There's a lot to do yet, and it's just, like I say, it's just a bit of exercise and a, one of those jobs that... Um, when you don't want to do anything else, you sit in the doorway because there's often a nice breeze. So, Anyway, your time is much appreciated, as Barry would say. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we'll catch you all next week, eh? Um, have a good one.